Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over pathfinding just like this. As you can see, our player is the blue, our enemy is the red, and our enemy is going to pick the fastest path to get to our player every single time. Let's say we go up here and we go over here. Oh, it's going to go down low. But let's go back this way. Now let's dodge it. Let's come down over. Let's go up here. Let's go down here. Oh, it's going to switch that way now. If you need help pathfinding, this is the video for you. Trust me. It's super, super basic. It's super, it's pretty simple in my opinion for an amazing pathfinding. It can change your game from mediocre to looking really, really cool. Okay. So to get started with pathfinding, we're going to want to create a 2D scene and we're going to name this our world. And in our world, we're going to have different stuff like the player, the enemy, our tile set, stuff like that. Right? So to start, we'll add our tile set and we'll just make a small map. And this map is actually going to be a 16 by 16. So it's going to be very small. So we're going to have to zoom in here in a minute, but that's the art size that I do have. And let me grab the art real quick. It's just a, it's just two little squares. So it's really nothing, but we go 2d pixel re-import and then you drag it here. As you can see, it's two squares. One of them you can't even see cause it's almost the exact same color as the edge. You can kind of see the difference, but you know, it's almost the exact same color, but that doesn't really matter. So if we go to our scene and we go to our tile map and we create a quick tile map real fast, we can have our different, you know, things that you have down here. Let me show you in a second what I'm talking about. So if we click new single tile, we click our snap options. We change it to, you know, fit the right size. You see, we have these different options. We have collision. We have navigation and we have a occlusion or however you say that but we have that as well but what we're going to be using collision right and navigation right so this is our wall so if we click on this we click collision and we add collision to our wall new single tile right because we need collision on our wall and for this this is our floor so we want the enemy to be able to move around on the floor but not the wall so the wall has collision so nothing can you know go past the wall but on the floor we're going to add our navigation, which is, you know, a built in feature of Goda and we'll click new single tile as well. So now that we have navigation and we have collision on both of our, you know, different tiles, we have our floor tile or our floor tile and our wall tile. Basically this is going to allow, you know, the enemy can walk on this. It can't walk on this, you know, pretty simple. And it has to go into a navigation 2d, right? And then later in our enemy scene, we'll access it. So we'll say if is on, you know, one of these tile or if it's on this tile, then we can do this, you know, and th that's kind of how it's going to work. Or if it's on tile with navigation 2D, then allow us to move, right? So basically what we want to do is first of all, we need a camera because it's, we're very zoomed out, like super zoomed out. We won't be able to see anything. So we'll just go like 0 0.2, 0 0.2 zoom. And we'll just bring it like right here. Now, if we go back to our tile set, the camera, you don't really need the camera is just, I had to put it on because we're so zoomed out and it's not, it's not good to be that zoomed out. Right. Or, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just, you wouldn't be able to see anything, but if we fill all these inside tiles with our floor, this means our enemy will be able to walk anywhere in this box, but let's make it pretty difficult. Let's add, let's add some walls here. Let's add a wall here. Let's add some walls here. And let's add an entire beam there, right? So now it's it's pretty difficult for our player to get around and our, for our enemy to navigate. So it's gonna be having to change different paths based on whatever this is the fastest path for the enemy to take, right? So this is gonna be a good way to test out our enemy. And if we play the game, obviously save the scene, but it's still not zoomed out because we don't have the camera on current. But now if we have the camera on current, we play it, you see that we are pretty zoomed in like that. But our tile map, like I said, it has navigation 2D nodes. So it has to be under a navigation 2D. So we can just make the tile map a child of the navigation 2D. And that should be fine. Obviously everything works the exact same because we didn't, didn't really change anything. But so next we're gonna need a player and I went ahead and made a very, very simple player real fast. It's just a kinematic body 2D, a sprite, a collision shape, and the code for our player is very, very, very simple, right? Just a variable for speed, variable for motion. And it basically just gets the input and moves us, you know, motion at X equals negative speed. That means we're gonna go left on the X axis. 
And if we're going left, we don't want to be going up or down, right? So the basic, the most basic movement you can ever get. And if you want, you know, more advanced movement for 2D, go to my very, very first video on this channel. It is phenomenal for this. And it still is to this day. It still is the best, you know, type of simple movement for 2D games. Not it's it's not this, right? But if we go to our world and we instant our player scene, our brand new player scene, and we go to our world and we can bring our player, you know, right here and we play the game. Well, now we have a working player, but we are missing an enemy. As you can see, these walls here do work, right? So they do stop us like they're supposed to, but we are missing our enemy. So we need to create an enemy. And before we do that, we need some groups here so we can access these different uh, so we can access the player. We can access the navigation 2D from our enemy script. So to do that, we're going to go to our player here, node up here, groups, and we're just going to add a player group to the player and to the navigation. We can just add a NAV for navigation group to our navigation 2D. Now, if we go to our nothing, we go to a new scene and we add, let's see. Yeah, we'll make this a kinematic body 2D. And this is going to be our enemy. And we're just going to need, you know, a sprite 2D and a collision shape, just the basic stuff. Same thing that our player has. And for our sprite, we will add this icon. We'll make it a very, very small. Where's scale? I'm not sure. It's right here. So 0.1 this way and 0.1 this way. Same size as the player visibility. It's going to be like red collision shape is going to be just a basic collision shape as well, just like that. And it all is good, but we need, you know, an enemy script, obviously. So if we create a brand new script, we have enemy.gd and this is going to be a pretty, pretty big script. I'm not going to lie, right? So first of all, we need some basic variables and these variables will be our speed variable, which will make it, we'll make it a little, no, we'll make, we'll make it the same speed as the player. I think the player is 30 speed. Yeah. The player is 30 speed. So we'll make it 30 speed. And we also need bar motion equals our vector two dot zero. Now we're going to need some different variables other than what the player has, right? So these variables are going to be our motion for our path, where we want our enemy to go. And we'll make this an array and we'll make it an empty array for now, right? This is going to be our path. So if we want the player to go to the enemy or we want the enemy to go to the player, then we'll put the player as our path. And we're also going to need to get the navigation node, navigation node. Whoa, 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 whoa. Navigation node, if I can spell it right. And for now, that's going to be equal to null. We'll set that up in the uh, ready function. Same with our player, right? We'll save the scene. I don't know why I cannot type right, but and our player. And then we also need a extra variable. This is going to be a variable that is kind of going to it's going to tell us, like, do we want to move to our spot? Yes or no. So like, do we want to send the signal attack? Right. But we'll just do move to spots. Uh, actually. Yeah, we don't need that. We don't, we don't really need that to be honest. So we're not going to add it, but if we go down here, we need a ready function and we'll just do ready function, just a normal one. And we also need to check our, what we're going to do here. This is, we're going to kind of instance the player scene. We're going to instance the navigation node from our world. And we're going to instance them so we can use them later down the line in this script, right? So I'll basically go get our if get tree. And this is why we added them to the group just a second ago, right? So get tree dot has group and we called it NAV. So navigation. If this has a group, then we'll have our navigation node. Our navigation node is going to equal to get tree dot get nodes in group in the group that we have nav and since there's only one item in there obviously in an array the very first item is number zero right if we have number one it'd be the second item in the array but we only have 
one item in the group, so it's zero. And since it's the only item in the group, it's our navigation node from our world, because that's the only other thing that we have. Get tree, I messed this up, this has to be a function. Now, we also need to do this for the player. So we have our if get tree dot has group player, because that's what we named our player group. And then we'll just do player equals get tree dot get nodes. Now basically the same as the one above, get nodes. And if, why can I not type? in group uh, player and then obviously we only have one item in the array as well so it's also going to be zero now we need a function this is going to be our physics process i mean we could make this a process function we'll just it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to be honest you can make it a physics prank function but we're going to have some different stuff here in this function right so we're going to need our create path that's the very first thing right our create path function we don't have it but we can create it right so create path function in our create path function we're going to need to kind of check like where where we're going to go like where do we need to go so if we'll basically go if navigation or if yeah if nav navigation it doesn't did I not spell it right? Why is it not autocorrecting? Nav, yeah, I didn't spell it right. But it's it's a big word. Navigation node. So if navigation node is not equal to null, which means it's something, and player is not equal to null. So basically, this means that it it's going to create a path if we if it can find the navigation node and if it can find the player. So if they both have something, then then it's based so once all this is found then it's going to start trying to create the path so basically as soon as the game starts it's not going to create a path until it finds these the until it finds the player and the navigation node right and that's that's pretty important but if we go to our path which our path is an array up here and our path is going to be equal to our navigation node it's going to be equal to our navigation node dot get our simple path which is a go dot function and then we'll get global position player dot global position and then false false so make sure no errors and we should be good this is basically just going to create the path it's going to add a position into our array but now we need a function that's going to tell us to go to that area in our array right so we'll name this function go to pretty you know, a simple name but go to function is going to be function go to and in this function we're going to need if path dot size equal or if size is greater than zero so basically we're going to check if there's more than zero items in the array, so there's one item in the array, then we have a path. We need to go to that path, right? So if there is an item in the array, if there is an item or an area we need to go to, then we'll have motion equals global position dot direction to uh, path path one times our speed and then if we create our yeah we don't need another function but if we go up here we need our motion equals move and slide motion right so our enemy actually moves along the ground but this all should work because here we create the path and here we basically say all right go to that area so motion equals global dot global position dot direction to path one. Okay, so it's basically going to move in a straight line to that path. But this create path 
because we have the navigation node here, it's going to keep us on the path, right? It's going to only, it's going to get the fastest path on these tiles only because they have the navigation 2D on these tiles only, right? So if we are to play, it's not going to work because we don't ha even have the player or we don't have the enemy. But if we instance the enemy, we put the enemy like right here and then we play. The enemy works. Look at this. The enemy chases the player. Now, obviously, we're never going to be able to get away now because they're the same speed. So that, that was a mistake. We'll make the enemy like 22 speed. Now, if we go to the world, you see the enemy chases around. It's You think it's going to always chase around this way? If you think yes, then you're wrong. Because if we get... See, it comes back because it's like, oh, that's the fastest way. Now, that's how I get over there. Go all the way around this way you know like it's gonna it's gonna calculate the very the fastest path that it can possibly take to get to the thing so you think it's gonna come all the way around like this right no it goes up that way right it's just it just takes the fastest path possible to get to the player all right so i made a little changes to like the size and the speed of our character and our enemy now, as you can see, the enemy follows the player any way he goes, doesn't matter. And he picks the, bet the best path to get to the player to make, you know, just, he picks the best path, the fastest path possible. So, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like so it can push this video to more inspiring game developers so they can learn to make their own go at games as well. And they can, you know, learn pathfinding because it's it's a pretty important topic. It's pretty important for almost any game ever. So, yeah, it it mean the world. And if you need any help on anything go out, please let me know in the comments because I would love to help you out. But stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.